hold you long. Uh, but I want to read to us in Joshua chapter number 24. And, uh, and I, I want to try to just preach this, if I can even make sense of it in a way that you'll understand it. I'm not sure I do understand it, and that's bad. If I if I've got my footing under me with it, it's probably a bad sign for how I'm going to help you get your footing under you. But I'm going to try this tonight. But I, I felt God really pricked my heart with this the other day, and I I loved what that brother I was listening to last week preach and said that people wanted their ears tickled instead of having their heart pricked. Yes. This pricked my heart. As I was reading the other day, and I began to look into it, so I'm going to try to help you with it tonight. And I don't know. Sometimes I, sometimes I wonder if I focus too much on. Sometimes I think I'm going to really preach. You know, I'm going to buck and snort and shout, and I love to do that. And then sometimes I feel like I need to, I need to slow down and get it to us. And I don't always know how. I don't always know whether I need to push the gas or the brake. Sometimes probably. I'm preaching and you feel like I'm popping the clutch and I'm not probably helping you very much. I'm going to try to feel my way through this. I don't know just exactly where we'll end up with it, but uh, but I do want to try to help us tonight and, and get you out uh, in a reasonable time. So let's read it in Joshua chapter number 24. And uh, let, let me just, before I read, let me, this, this 24th chapter, Joshua is, is on his way out. He has really started a chapter or so ahead of this, addressing Israel in his time of death. God's already told Joseph, uh, uh, Joshua, sorry, God's already told Joshua that he's, that he's going to die and that it's time for there to be a replacement. Everybody doesn't get that luxury. Uh, very few people live close enough to God that God tells them when they're about to go. I have known men that were there, and they knew their days were short, and so they began to make certain things. That's where Joshua was. He knew that his hour was come. He knew this is it. This is as far as I'm going. And so he begins to address the nation of Israel. It's not just a little country church. He's addressing hundreds and thousands of people, and, and, and he begins to reiterate to them the covenant of God. He begins to reiterate to them the law of God. He, he starts really trying to hone in on what's really important to cleave to God. And that you, as I, I mentioned this morning, that repetitive phrase where uh, in, in some of these Old Testament laws that you, you do not add to or diminish off from yes. what God has given. And so Moses has given this to Joshua. And Joshua now is giving this to the people of Israel again to renew their vows. You know, it, it's like when a couple has been married. Matter of fact, Sister Bean that passed and they had her funeral today uh, just, just a few days or weeks ago, she and Brother Joe se uh, celebrated their 70th wedding anniversary. And uh, a lot of times, I just saw some pictures the other day down here uh, around Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Brother Denny Renfro and his wife celebrating, I believe it was their 50th wedding anniversary, and they renewed their vows. And, and, and I've seen a lot of people do that. My aunt and uncle, my dad's uh, older brother, Jim, and his wife, Aunt Sue, they, they renewed their vows on their 50th wedding anniversary. It isn't that you didn't make a vow to start with, and it isn't that you have any, it, it isn't that you have any premonition of breaking the vow you made the first time. You just, you just want to reaffirm that. That, that I still feel like I felt. You know, I, I, I told Jennifer on our 20th wedding anniversary, it's now our 25th wedding anniversary, and I told her, I, I said, I just want you to know I did, and I still do. The, yes. the day we got married, those preachers had us up there in front of that crowd of people, and, and they said, say I do. And I said that. But looking back over two decades, I said I did. I did then, and I still do now. I just want to reaffirm to you that I'm still in love. I'm still willing to love you, honor you, cherish you, keep you in sickness and health. Richer, more, better, worse, long as we both till the end. Forsaken all others, keep the only under her. I still believe that. I still hold that vow precious in my heart. 
And so that's, that's the setting that Joshua has these people in here. He knows he's fixing to have to leave them. And he don't want to leave them and they just go to pot. Mm -hmm. And that happens often. The greatest tragedy of a business or a corporation or a nation is when it has to be led by people who never had the vision for it to start with. The men who rose to create the revolution from whence America was born had a vision for a nation founded on godly principles and, and godly ideas, godly themes. And they were praying men. They were God-fearing men. All of them may not have been extremely religious, but they were all God-fearing men. There's a difference in that. Now, and, and we're short today, not only, of course, we're short on religious people. We're short on people that really have the goods. We're also short on God-fearing people. Those men that started America believed in this nation. Yes. And they created a constitution that would be right for us to, to, to carry a nation out as they saw it in their vision. But I'm afraid we've entered into a time that people are coming into power in America that don't have the vision that the forefathers had. And that creates a problem. And so Joshua knows that at the time I'm gone, is this going to fall into disrepair? And so he's really putting these people to the test here. He's making them renew a vow and a covenant. He's already given that wonderful verse here. That, that in verse 15, if it seem evil to you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. And as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. And we love that verse. And it, it's printed on things and hung over doors and on plaques and houses. And, and Joshua just reminding them to stay with God. It's yeah. really what he's doing. It's really not a deep theology here. It's a very simple principle that's being carried out. Joshua's reminding these people that God is your God and you are his people. And stay with the Lord. So I want to read to you. That being said. Joshua says in verse 22. He says to the people. You are witnesses against yourself. That you have chosen the Lord. To serve him. And they answering back. They said we are witnesses. In other words we have chosen. And we're willing to witness that. And he said now that we're put away. The strange gods that are among you. And incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, The Lord our God will we serve, and his voice will we obey. Then Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and set them a statute and an ordinance in Shechem. Verse number 26 said, And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God and took a great stone and set it up there under an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said unto all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness unto us. Listen, for it hath heard all the words of the Lord, which he spake unto us. It shall be therefore a witness unto you, lest you deny your God. So Joseph, uh, Joshua here, man, I keep wanting to make him Joseph. And so <laughs> Joshua here gets a stone and he sets this stone up by this big oak tree that's just outside the door of the church, as it were. And he tells those people this, this stone is going to be a witness because it, what is it? The stone. This stone has heard the word of the Lord. He heard what he told you. This stone's going to be a witness unto you unless you would deny your God. The Bible speaks about false witnesses in 24 different places in the Bible. God hates a false witness. 167 times the Bible references a witness. 45 times it references more than one by calling them witnesses. And, and the Bible teaches us that, that by the multitude of witnesses are seeing that we're compassed out with so great a cloud of witnesses. It's not necessarily talking. A lot of times we use the word witness like this. And we talk about, you know, Brother Junior went to witness to his neighbor. Or Brother Brad went to witness to his co-worker. But what this witness really is here is these are people that have stood up and said, here's what I'm willing to do. I'm going to mark what you said and I'm going to remember it. 
And if you don't keep your word to God, I'm going to witness against you. When you witness to somebody about Jesus Christ, what you're doing is you're telling them about your vow. You're telling them about your covenant with God. And you're testifying to them on God's behalf. Webster said like this in his 1828 version of his dictionary that a witness was a testimony or an attestation of a fact or event. A thing that furnishes evidence or proof. One who sees personally or has experienced the event. It subscribes and confirms the authenticity of a testimony. It's one who gives a testimony. In a court of law, when you're in a jury trial, they'll call a witness up. They'll set them in a little box on one side or the other where the judge is seated. A lot of times they'll bring a Bible up or they'll make them swear an oath that you swear, you solemnly swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help you, God. And you're witnessing to that court of law that Not what you're Jesus. fixing to say on this witness stand is factual. And it's the proof that we're needing here. According to everything that I read in the laws of statistics, over 52% of convictions in the United States are wrongful convictions. And they're because of a false witness. Amen. 52% of all eyewitnesses are later proven to be wrong. That's pretty bad there. 52% of eyewitness testimony. You tell me tonight we don't have a problem in the American justice system. Praise God. Help they God. wrongful convictions happen because yes. of a false witness. Two different articles that I read said that possibly up to 70% of convictions in America are wrongful due to false witnesses. Can you imagine that? 70% of people convicted are possibly innocent, but the witness got it wrong. I'll tell you when Joshua chose a witness, he didn't choose a lump of dirt. Why? What's the significance of the stone? I tell you what the significance is. This stone doesn't change. Wind and water and rain and time. I set this rock in here on this pulpit tonight, and a hundred years should come and go. And this rock is left sitting right here. In a hundred years, it's going to look like it looks right now, unless it's been subject to some force of nature or mankind. Amen. That rock doesn't change. If you put up a piece of wood, it's going to rot. If you put up a piece of earth, it's going to eventually decay. But the stone was there to testify that for all of time and eternity, this stone would be a witness against these people that they are serving the Lord. I want to talk to you tonight about a stone witness. Praise God. Remember, God hates a false witness. Jesus told the people that your yea be yea, and let your nay be nay. I've heard of witnesses given a testimony, and then on cross-examination, stay with me just a little bit. I'll try not to hold you too long. But I, I, I've heard of a witness giving up give a testimony, and then the cross-examination starts by either the prosecution or defense, as the case may be, and they begin to question those people. Did you really see them running out of that restaurant? Did you really see a gun in their hand? Well, I saw something there. And they begin to question the witness. And oftentimes, Sister Jean, they begin to erode that witness away. And it comes to find out, well, I may have been mistaken. I may have had some misinformation. Maybe I just thought I saw that. And by the time they created a reasonable doubt, and then the jury and the judge will rule differently in a situation because of the testimony of a witness. And then the Joshua sees the importance of not only of a witness, but that the witness will stay. That the witness will not change. I wonder tonight, is your experience in God just written in wood? Is it written in the earth? Is it written in the sand waiting on the next wave to come by and wash it out? Or have you made a covenant with God and sealed it in stone? That time and eternity is not going to change it. This witness is here to say that I belong to God. How sure is your witness? How sure is your testimony? Is your testimony so set in stone? I've got a spider on my rock. Ew. Is your testimony 
so set in stone that if someone comes to Sister Jean and says, I saw Gail Seals hand a bag of cut heroin to a little child in that school up there, I saw the child take that heroin. I saw them overdose and go into a coma and be taken by an ambulance. I saw that happen. And your testimony, Sister Gail, is it such that Sister Jean would just have a smirk on her look and say, you're crazy. You never saw anything of the sort. Is your testimony so that if someone comes along and says, I saw them do this, somebody's going to say, you didn't see them do that. That's a child of God. They've got a testimony. They've got a stone witness. I tell you tonight, in a world that's changing, in a world that wants gender euphoria, in a world that wants everything to be toxic turning, and then we do it this way under this administration, and this way under another administration. I tell you, I want to have a stone witness. I want a witness for the Lord. And that stone heard it, and that stone knows. And then what Joshua was telling them, that witness is never going to change. You may change. But if you do, the stone hurts you. Man, I want to tell you something tonight. Stones here. Yes. <laughs> do they? Where's your tear? I don't know. But I know the prophet of God said the stone hath heard. And I know later on in Habakkuk, he's just a minor prophet. Sister Jean, you need to get a hold of that and teach that to me. What makes a prize that just in how long winded he was that made him minor? He was a shorter winded prophet. I'll tell you, he got a prophecy and it got in the Bible and it come to pass. He wasn't very minor in my books. He was a man of God. But Habakkuk said like this. He said the stone's going to cry out of the yes. wall and the beam's going to cry out and the beam's going to cry out of the timber and answer it. Amen. He told us in the book of Habakkuk. Amen. Joshua said the stone is hurting. And Habakkuk said the stone's going to answer. Yes. Habakkuk, chapter number two. Praise God. The stone shall cry out of the wall, and the beam out of the timber shall answer it. What are you telling me? I'll tell you, I set that cabin out there on some big old beams. I didn't just set it on a two before. I didn't just set it on, I set that thing on some beams. I've got some. Some, uh, we, we've been delivered some beams to some people, some four by 12. I delivered some sometime back that were six by 12 cedar beams. I tell you, there's a big old thing. Brother Junior, that beam is laid there so it's not going to move. You're not just going to come along and bend it like you would a toothpick. Hey, man, there's something stable about it. I tell you what God wants out of his children. No, he wants you to have a stone witness. Yes. He wants you to have a testimony that's sure. Hey, and the Bible said to make your calling up. And your election, sure. Praise God, I'm telling you, don't ever get caught in a place where the stone has to answer and say, wait a minute, you didn't do that right. Help him, God. The stone heard it, he said. And it's going to be a witness for you. We go tonight in the book of Luke in the triumphal entry as Jesus is coming into the city through the gate. Palm trees have been stripped and their branches have been strewn in the way. Coats are there. Vesters are there. Men and women are lying in the streets. Children are crying, Hosanna. The crowd is crying, Hosanna. And somebody said, you need to make them be quiet. Amen. Isn't it amazing when people start talking about Jesus? How everybody suddenly says, you need to be quiet Help about that. God. You need to not use that name. Isn't it amazing how? Amen. When we start having the move of the Holy Ghost, the devil says you shouldn't be shouting. Amen. He don't ever tell you you shouldn't be sitting. He Help always says Jesus. you shouldn't be shouting. Sister Carolyn, he don't ever come along and tell you. He tells you, don't testify. He don't ever come along and say, hey, Carolyn, jump up and tell us what God done. Isn't it amazing Help what he Jesus. does? It's always contradictory to the Spirit. Amen. Brother, I'm telling you, he said, at least come. Amen. Hold their peace. I tell you, the stones are going to cry. They've been that old gravel parking lot. The mouth of those stones are going to open. And they're going to go to praise of God. The stone knows it. Amen. You may be in doubt about Jesus Christ and whether he's the Son of God. You may be in doubt tonight about whether or not holiness matters. But I tell you, 
thing to this. I tell you, when somebody falls dead in church and they lay a prayer cloth on them yes. and they come back alive, the stone knows. Amen. Yes. The stone heard it. The stone knows about it. I went out the other day to the farm. This message on my heart. If these should hold their peace, I'm going to tell you the stones are going to go crying out. So I went out to the farm the other day. I started finding me some stones tonight for my little message. Praise God. Bree, help me out here, Sid. I got these two right here for Addison and Caroline. Here, Sissy. Man, I got some for Addison and for Caroline. I want you to have a stone of remembrance. Joshua said, set that stone out there. Amen. I want, I want you to make sure that stone, I tell you, look at that there, Brother Junior. That thing's got streaks in it and lines in it. Amen. Amen. That stone knows you got saved. Yes. That stone yes. knows you got Holy Ghost filled. Amen. About two or three years ago right now, you're standing right where you're standing. Your tongue begin to speak a language that your mom Thank never you, taught Jesus. you. A teacher's good. A stone Thank knows you, that. Amen, Sister Carrie. You might Jesus. wonder sometimes about it. I tell you, the stone knows. Praise God. Give that to Brother Brad back there. Amen. The stone knows tonight. You look around, you say, I don't know. I'm in doubt. I wonder I'm going through something. Did I? Do I really need to keep this covenant with God? I'm telling you, the stone knows whether you do or not. Yes. Amen. Joshua sent a sister Debbie. So, amen. The stone said, yeah, I heard what you said. I heard you pray that night. I heard you repent of your sin. Amen. The stone will be a witness unto you. Amen. And if you start holding your peace, the stone shall immediately yes. cry out. The stone of witness, Sister Barb. Amen. Your sister Gina being in here. <laughs> She's seen a lot. Boy, the Lord's done for her. Brother Derek, I was telling him this morning, Sister Jean is one of the only charter members here and still alive, able to go. There's Sister Gail one. That's got a lot of colors in it, a lot of things in there that God's done for Sister Gail. Seals. Yes. Praise God. I tell you, that stone knows. That represents a lot of things. Sister Barb's stone, it represents the fall she had a few weeks ago and how God spared her life for Mama. Amen. The stone knows about those things. The stone understand. Amen. Joshua said, just remember, there's a stone of witness. There in that stone, Sister Jean represented over 80 years of life on planet Earth. Give those to Mom and Brianna, Sissy. That stone, I got stones for all the ones that are out tonight. Amen. That stone, Sister Jean told him, it represents a little girl leaning her tired head on her mom and her granddad in a prayer line in hot springs waiting on somebody to pray a prayer of faith for me. It represents a little girl in Sister Wilma Kreiner's revival. Amen, Sister Gail, your stone. It represents a young lady out here in the woods behind a chicken house somewhere. Amen, pray to get an experience in God. And the devil yes. come on and say that Holy Ghost ain't real. Look, Amen, you shouldn't talk in tongues like that all the time, but, but the stone hath heard it. Amen. And I tell you, if you start holding your peace, you just remember some night when you go home and say, I didn't have nothing to testify about. I didn't have a song tonight. And you walk in your bedroom, and that stone said, yes, you did. And that stone look at you and say, yes, God did that for you. You need to remember tonight. And then don't take it for granted. Don't take it lightly. Don't just write Work of God here 
than any of us have. Yes. She's put more time into this work of God than any two of us have. And Brother Junior, she sits over here tonight. She's no longer 21. Her steps are slow. Hey Amen. Sometimes I come in, try to meet her here to do things to church because I just don't want her to have to deal with it. But Sister Jean, I want to tell you something tonight. If you don't wake up in the morning, I want to promise you I'm going to keep preaching this everlasting gospel. I want to tell you there'll be a church here. Hey Amen. As long as God puts breath in my body and this word on my heart, I don't want you to ever look around and say, I wonder if Brother Justin's going to go back on the blood. I don't want you to ever look around. I'm willing to let the stone here me tonight and tell you sister Jean I'll hold the banner high I ain't gonna let no premonition she's fixing to die don't you fall out on me here hey, hey brother junior if you don't come back Thursday night uh, I want to tell you I'm going to preach Holy Ghost baptism uh, hey man if you're not here sister Gail uh, I'm willing to let the stone hear me uh, and tell you I'm willing to preach this gospel uh, I'm willing to put my life on the line uh, hey but for what Jesus said I'm not going to get another Bible Hallelujah. I'm not going to find another one. I'm going to keep reading this same old book. Amen. 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 Brother Brad, I want you to know, even if the years come and go, and you're wheeled in here sometime in a wheelchair all stooped over. A little old man and people wonder who that guy is. I just want you to know I'm going to keep preaching this gospel. Hey, but I want you to know if there's a man comes in here with an old dark countenance like you had, I'm going to tell him there's hope. I'm going to tell him there's a seven man. Hey, 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 hey. He's not Soon will be 21. 
Addison's almost a teenager. Amen. People I started out with, Sister Gail, has turned their back on this gospel. Amen. People I preached with and rejoiced with. I went to see one of them many states from here. And he walked in a place where I was at. Stood about this far away like this. And tears began to run down his face. Hey Amen. I got over there and shook his hand. I did. He didn't look like he used to. It. I said, what's the matter? He said, I'm glad some of you stuck with it. He said, oh. He said, don't change, Brother Richardson. No, keep preaching to God. He said, I wish that's like you are. Yes, help him, God. He had his witness in something that the world got a hold of. And it washed his witness out. You can rub your hand over the top of this till your hand's calloused and you're 200 years old. But you ain't fixing to wear that out. That's a stone. Yes. I didn't have the stone like Joshua had. He brought a great stone. Bless and he him reared Jesus. it up. And he said, your witness is against yourself. Bless and the stone hath heard you. Bless Let me close with this. Greater than these stones that I've handed to you tonight. The Bible said the stone that was set in on of all you builders has become the head of the corner. Jesus Christ is that stone. He's that rock of ages, the Bible called him. They used to sing that song. He, he was that stone that was hewed out of a mountain, Lord. Jesus was that stone that came rolling down from Babylon. Hallelujah. Uh, woo! Lord, I feel good tonight preaching to you. Amen. Not only did this stone hear it, not only did this stone you're holding hear it, but the stone heard it. The head of the corner heard it. Amen. He'll call me into account someday for my faithfulness to the message of truth. It's not my message. It's not the holiness people's message. It's the message of the truth of God's word. The stone hath heard it. The stone shall be a witness against you trying to think of a better phrase and I hope you don't find fault with what I'm fixing to say for lack of a better word as our younger people would say if a stone talked to you it would freak you out Maybe don't, don't, please don't find fault with me I hope that will just kill your spirit it would freak you out if these things started testifying of the things they've seen God do it get, I tell you, it bothers you. I told somebody the other day, Sister Carolyn, I said, it, 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 it amazed me so much that Balaam's donkey spoke is that he kept answering that thing. I tell you, if I'm ever up there feeding cows from other ghosts talking to me, I ain't going to stand around and have a conversation with it. I'm going to get out of there. If a stone starts crying out, it's going gonna, it's gonna to weird me out, freak me out, scare me to death, give me the heebie-jeebies, whatever you want to call it. Jesus said, don't ever, Sister Jennifer, don't ever quit telling that the Lord raised you up. Don't ever quit telling how he raised you up out of the floor. Don't ever quit telling about the stroke that I had and how God made that arm work again. Don't ever quit telling about coming up on that red Benjamin head and his skull crushed in, blood pouring out a hole in the side of his skull. Don't ever forget tell them those things. The stones have heard it. They've heard those things. Don't ever quit telling it. Because I promise you, someday you walk by and a rock opens its stone mouth and says you failed to tell the story. You failed to tell it Jesus and his love. Where's it going to leave you? I'd like to just leave it like this tonight with you. I want my stone to have heard, but I want him to never have to open his mouth. I don't want my stone to ever talk. I'll talk for it. I'll tell of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story. It will be my theme and glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Is that how you feel tonight? Brother Brad, one of those co-workers comes in looking down distraught. Don't fail to tell them what God did for you here this altar, in this place. When somebody comes in and says, my life's falling apart. I've lost it all at the end of life's road. I'm ready to just take my life and call it quits. Tell them about that seventh man that you met. And how God put your life all back together again. Sister Carolyn, don't ever, when you run across one of your children or grandchildren or 
great grandchildren or a neighbor or a friend, and they're on the run away from God, rebelling against the Lord. Don't ever tell them about the preacher's girl. They wasn't doing it just right. And spend some time going the wrong direction. And have a long arm of love reached out, and grab her and pull her back in. Don't ever fail. Tell the story. The stone hath heard it, and it is our witness. stand tonight when time and chance has happened and it's your moment to leave this world you want a stone witness don't you praise God don't fail don't fail to tell it but what I'm really worried about tonight what I'm most concerned about is the stone Said in all of you builders. He's my witness. He knows what he did for me. Don't fail to tell your story. Let's come pray tonight, would you? Those stones are yours to keep. Lay them up. Live and work and walk before God in a way that they'll never have to speak a word. Let's come pray tonight.